Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. This is kind of part two to the other video for um, my creative year for the month of April, the prompt being vibrant, although I don't use a lot of vibrant colors. I'm trying, but you know, it's not something I'm comfortable with yet. So this is part two, kinda, to the gate books that I made, the ones that look like wooden fences. Yep, they got fat. <laughs> They've gained a lot of weight. All right, so this is the, f the one that I did on camera, and I did something incredibly dumb because if you saw the video, I didn't like how there was one extra stick width away from the edge of this paper. So being the bonehead that I was that day, I took these... Um, metal snippers and snipped off the end which was really kind of <clears throat> not well thought out because if I had wanted that to be flat there what I should have done was take was you know but psh, not taking it off I should have left it where it was and I didn't <laughs> so after I finished filming I decided that I wanted more accordions or more um pages in my book so I made a second accordion and attached it to the first one and if you can see right here see that kind of funky looking gap right there that's where I attached the first one and the second one so when you decide to do this you need to make up your mind how thick you want to be from the get-go so that this doesn't happen to you and don't glue the front or the back on it until you have finished and you know for sure how fat you want this to be because once you glue these things on there is no turning back I have learned all kinds of lessons from this I'm trying to save you guys some tears <laughs> okay so here it is I'm gonna do a little flippy um, I got a lot of these images from Cindy Utter and from, you know, how you collect your own images out of magazines and things. I have to tell you about this one. When I, when I was a chef, somebody showed me a picture of this man who makes fruits and vegetables, pots and pans and animals and that kind of thing, into human faces. And I went to the Louvre in Paris on a vacation to, to a cooking school. And while I was at the Louvre, I found this man's paintings, and they were awesome. His name is uh, Giuseppe Archimbaldo. And when you go to the Louvre, you see a lot of the stuff. You don't see all of them, but he has a ton that look like food. He has some of um, his that look like... Um, if you turn, there's one, I think, in the smaller book that if you turn it upside down, it just looks like a bowl of food. But when you turn it right side up, it's a person. It's very cool. Giuseppe Archimbaldo. I know, I like weird stuff. Anyway, okay, so there's that one. And so the rest of these were images that were cut from magazines. There's book text in here. There's painty papers over cardstock. That's what I did this on. There's stickers. There's words. Whatever I could find that I needed to deplete the stock is what I used in this little book. I had a great time making this. This really did challenge my creativity because I'm from the philosophy that less is more. The page does not have to be covered with every image, everything covered. That sometimes simplicity is complicated in itself. So in culinary school, they taught us less is more. So I kind of applied that, that thinking to this. I really did have a great time making this. I enjoy doing little books. See, I was waiting for some images from Cindy Utter to come in the mail, and this is all stuff that she sent me in the mail right there. The bird, the cactus, and the cushion. And I love that cushion. That's one page. I like putting words on my stuff. Some of them I put it on, some of them I didn't. Just depended on if I thought what I had would fit the situation.
This one I regret not making a white bunny. You can barely see the bunny on here. It's a it's supposed I, I carved the bunny um, when we did December carve either last year or year before last, and I should have made the bunny white because he's kind of a chocolate color and he doesn't show up very well on the page. But you can see him on the camera, but when I'm looking at him in person, he doesn't stick out as well. So I outlined him, but you know, the only other thing I could do to make him better is to do all the strokes to make the hair and honestly, not happening. I love flowers. I love animals. I like how this this cat is kind of twisted and it says, will you promise never to leave me? <laughs> he's an ugly cat and he's so ugly, he's so cute. This came out of an art journal magazine. This came out of, uh, I don't know where this came from. A knitting magazine, I'm, I suppose. Oops. There's nudity on that page. I forgot to put the post-it note over it. Okay. I don't want to get sacked by the YouTube police. Sorry. I don't care if she's naked. You can't see anything but her butt. But you know how that is. And here's another Giuseppe Archimbaldo. This guy is mud and sticks. And he's got a hairdo that goes all wild and crazy. And he's wearing what looks like a mink coat. And the the um oh my goodness what is it the giant pin that women wear on things totally escapes me it's not a cameo it's a brooch is made out of it looks like a yellow tomato and a red tomato in this picture just love this guy's stuff it's so wacky that i just really like it okay so there's my fence i did not put anything on the outside of it because i haven't quite decided what i want to do with it yet but i did paint this so it kind of blends in with the color from the sticks and i i'm really pleased at how well it turned out it still needs a closure i want to put some kind of a gate looking hardware closure on it and i'm going to decorate the front a little bit but other than that it's finished all right here is the little one you never saw constructed other than the empty you know what it looked like when it was empty the front is decorated with brads where I took uh, metal snips and I snipped off the two little prongs that you use on the brads to make this be able to lay down flat. I glued them on with tacky glue. This is a charm off of a bracelet and there's, there's a hole up here at the top. So I saw something on Pinterest where you could turn this sideways and I did it one on the front and one on the back. And then I can take a chain with a lobster claw. Those of you who make jewelry understand what I'm talking about. And attach the chain here and put the lobster claw here. Then when I want to open the book, I just undo the lobster claw. And then the book will open freely. Let me, this one's a little. All right, so I'm trying to figure out where's the, there we go. Wait till it focuses. There we go. All right, so I'm going to give you a little flip through through this one. Again, this is made out of the same type stuff. It's the accordion book, and I painted it green, like the same color as the fence. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Sloppy girl. All right, so here is the little one. There's lots of stickers in this one because I have discovered the joy of decorating with stickers and rub-ons, and I've become kind of focused on those lately. I don't know why. Don't ask. Because I can't explain it. Actually, I can't explain 99% of the things that I do. These, these all came out of a Connecting Threads catalog. This came off of a box from Dollar Tree that was holding those little wooden blocks that kids play with. And these are colored pencils. I can't tell you where they came from. The rest of these are magazine cutouts from magazines. And there's... A little chicken sticker. I thought that chicken had to be on there because of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Ta-da! <laughs> P for pears. And since I did buttons on here, I at least wanted some kind of a tape measure looking thing. This was, this elephant kind of chokes me up when I think about it. This came from National Geographic magazine and the article was about elephants being killed in India 
because they get hit with trains when they're crossing the railroad tracks because they don't understand that the train could kill them. And they end up crossing over the tracks and getting hit, hit by trains. And I thought that was really sad. And I, I wanted to put that in here to remind myself you know, that it's, it's kind of sad that elephants are disappearing just because they're crossing the railroad tracks in the wild to get to the other side of the road to eat, take care of their families, get a drink of water, move on, migrate. These are wild mustangs. So I want, even though they're not color coordinated, they both say the same thing. Is that being a wild mustang is a hard life, but they're very happy. And elephants would be a lot happier if trains didn't cross through their territory. I can't explain either one of these. <laughs> I just liked them. She's holding the bunny in the picture, and I found little teeny miniature bunnies, and so I just put them on the page. I can't, I, I can't explain any of that one. And this one, it says discover treasure, and I put a diamond right there where the clam is. This is from also from National Geographic. This guy right here is a sticker, so... Um, is the coral behind it but this is a picture from I think Key West where they have lots of statues a guy does statues of real people and then they put them in the ocean so that coral can grow on them and divers can use them as a tourist attraction when they go diving and this guy has got a ball cap on he looks kind of like an older guy and he's looking down but he has a lovely ball cap on This is some kind of a chipboard thing that looks like the old, and this is dating myself, slides. So I didn't have any dark kind of stuff to put over it, but I put the camera in there. I lived in Japan when I was a little girl. Well, I was 12. And I think it was a, one of the most wonderful, magical places my father ever got stationed when he was in the military. So I love Japanese things. And not for nothing, it's not cliche, it is the truth, that whenever you go places, Japanese tourists always have a lot of cameras taking a lot of photographs. A memory to hold on to. My friend was on vacation when I did this. She was in Florida at the beach. And I thought this was, you know, this is kind of for her. A memory to hold on to. A day at the beach. Photograph memories. And that's really important. You know, cameras used to look like this when we were younger, and now they certainly have changed. Now everybody's got a cell phone or a tablet taking pictures. Doodled on this one a little bit. Found a very teeny weeny small sticker of a ladybug. I'm sorry, I keep holding it up too high. Oop, there we go. This says focus on it. I put cut out eggs from um, Graphic Fairy on here. I think that's where I got the eggs from is Graphic Fairy. And I wanted, you know, there to be a correlation between the bird here, the bird house, and then the eggs. This one, no explanation, just like the colors. This one is two rabbits. I made this the mother rabbit, and I made this the father rabbit. And I doodled around the outside of each picture. Wonderful creature. This was a story about sea turtles from National Geographic. This was just because I like the colors. And where's a crown? There they are when they were young. The... the queen and the prince and I had a nice sparkly crown and then it I cut words out of something it says where's a crown okay so that is my flip through of both the books that I made with the wooden popsicle sticks for my creative year I thought let me back you out I thought you guys might like to see these to see how they finished up all right thanks for watching everybody I'll see you next time bye bye